Mouth to anus, we have a tubular GI tract, gastrointestinal system, and it's involved in the digestion and absorption of nutrients. The gastrointestinal tract is not just one tortuous tube. It, it From mouth to anus, there are 100 trillion gut microorganisms that live in a symbiotic relationship with us. They, uh, There are different, it's not just bacteria, there are viruses uh, and other types of organisms. But the point is that it's not just one tube that's sterile. We have microorganisms that live with us and share with us uh, many things. Uh, they can produce uh, nutrients, they can produce vitamins, they can produce amino acids, they can produce serotonin, for example, neurotransmitters, they can produce hormones, and they can affect the GI tract locally and distally from head to toe because they're able to produce these molecules that traverse the gut lumen and circulate in the body from head to toe. So um, they're very important because they carry a lot of genetics even more than our own cells. So that's what's new in the GI world right now, the focus on how to get these bacteria or fungi or viruses, uh, these microorganisms to work for us, not against us. Because it turns out that we have a lot of control over what kind of population of organisms are in abundance in our gut. there are healthy bacteria or health promoting bacteria or viruses or organisms and there are inflammatory microorganisms and you kind of have a little bit of control over and there's research going on about this and there's more and more coming out well how could you sort of control whether you're having by eating a certain way how could you control perhaps health rather than disease And so that's where the research is now focused on. All right, so we're gonna unpack this um, GI upset, fatigue, because that's big for people, right? Like it's, it's, you know, people need their afternoon coffee and then they need their sleep medicine and then they need their, I mean, you know, it's people aren't naturally getting rest and so they're fatigued all the time. And then uh, dysbiosis and and irritable bowel syndrome. And this is all stimulating uh, from lactose, Correct. So there is a lactose sugar, which is a very large sugar molecule that needs the enzyme lactase that lives in the GI tract and breaks down the lactose sugar into the smaller subunits, right? Mm -hmm. If we're, most of us are missing this lactase enzyme. So when we don't- We're supposed to miss it, aren't we? We're supposed to actually lose it after we stop breastfeeding after age two. Some people can hang on to this enzyme for longer, but for the most part, we end up losing it. And a lot of people, even if you're Caucasian, Northern European descent, if you ever have a gastrointestinal infection, usually uh, you lose the ability to break down uh, lactose sugar because somehow it, the lactose enzyme goes. I, I see a lot of uh, lactose intolerance post gastrointestinal infections in mm. many people. So if you have traveler's diarrhea, for example, I see a lot of people afterwards, they just can't uh, eat dairy anymore, which is good for their health. They don't know that, but you know, it's kind of a favor nature is giving them. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so lactose intolerance, what happens is this very large molecule is traveling in the intestines and feeding uh, the enterococcus bacteria, which we'll talk about, Mm -hmm. some of the more harmful bacteria and promotes the expansion of this harmful bacteria. And But what happens, what people want to know, well, what happens to me if I have lactose intolerance and I'm consuming dairy? Well, what? You get severe bloating because um, basically you get all of this gas production in the GI tract, which is excessive. You get diarrhea through osmosis because this large molecule is dragging a bunch of water with it into the colon. You get cramping and abdominal pain because this whole thing is just irritating the the gut. And so um, it's definitely unpleasant. I've seen people who would have such bad diarrhea where they would have 14 bowel movements if they had consumed any dairy products. I have patients who end up in the hospital. I had a patient who had a colonoscopy, a screening colonoscopy with me. And then afterwards, and she was dairy free for the longest time because I had asked her, you need to stop 
drinking milk and stop eating dairy she had a colonoscopy she called and she's like i'm deathly ill after the colonoscopy i thought she had an incidental perforation of the gut mm-hmm. i said go to the er now we need a ct scan we need to make sure you didn't perforate the, the bowel so she rushed to the hospital they did a ct scan and they're like no you're fine she's like i was like are you sure there's no perforation yes she's fine and so then i was like what did you eat after the colonoscopy we all went to starbucks and had a latte I was like, with dairy. She says, yes, I know. I'm sorry. It was just I was just rewarding myself after the colonoscopy. I wanted to have something that I haven't had for a while. She ended up in the hospital. So a lot of people think, okay, so a little bit of gas and bloating and cramping. It can be bad. And it's well underestimated. So anyway, so if there's one thing I want to um, tell you guys is that it's very common for people to get misdiagnosed as IBS because no one would think, oh, it, lactose intolerance could right. be that bad where it land you in the hospital. It can. Hmm. Are these all symptoms of inflammation? So your body fighting uh, for a foreign molecule coming in, in this case, this large sugar molecule as lactose, and your body is mounting a defense in the form of oh diarrhea, God, this constipation? Is such a good question. Such a que- good question. It's not inflammation at the beginning. When you first eat something that is uh, not well digested, it will give you indig- maldigestion. So mm-hmm. it's sort of a maldigestion, right? It's not getting digested properly. However, there are new studies that show that it could actually as a secondary cause lead to inflammation. And I just read Mm -hmm. this uh, paper today, actually, in patients with graft versus host. So these are people with leukemia and blood cancers, and you have to wipe out their entire bone marrow cells with uh, the use of uh, heavy duty uh, chemotherapeutic okay. drugs and then give them a transplant of healthy cells. Okay. These are donor transplanted. So graft versus host disease is when these grafted molecules basically and the body don't get along very well and people actually get an overwhelming disease and die. So graft versus host disease is real. So they is looked it, into is it connected to the leukemia or is it a result of the chemotherapy? So that's the good question. They were trying to figure out, okay, so what could it be? So the chemotherapy wipes out our own blood cells and then what you do is you give these other cells that are supposed to replenish what was lost through the chemotherapy. From somebody else. From somebody else. And then you use medicines to make sure that these cells don't kill us. Mm -hmm. But some people get graft versus host disease and they die. And so this research is how do we stop it? How do we prevent it? So how do we get the body to accept the foreign healthy cells that you that you want to make the patient actually healthier exactly yeah. strong so again that's, coming back from that cancer that's right okay. so there's a lot of research going on about that and I actually stumbled upon this uh, this this uh, research article actually Dotsy had sent it to me I was looking at this and it was so interesting it it has something to do with the gut microbiome so it turns out that these graft versus host disease patients were dying they have actually an expansion of a certain bacteria called the enterococcus enterococcus faecalis and enterococcus facium and interestingly these enterococcus bacteria that live in the gut which are inflammatory they uh, basically provoke the T lymphocyte cells, which are basically to protect us, but they're finding stuff foreign and just attack. And the foreign stuff is in this case, we don't want it to be attacked. We want it to be absorbed and used. Exactly. So uh, what's causing the inflammation happens to be in this population of patients was found to be the enterococcus bacteria living in our own gut, causing this inflammation, these T lymphocyte expansion and and war, basically inflammation, right? It's the T lymphocytes are activated and they're just killing everything off. Then they looked at some dietary uh, causes of enterococcus expansion and they noticed that, well, in fact, dairy had something to do with it, where for some reason, these enterococcus uh, population loved lactose sugar, mm. and they were expanded. In the uh, And th- this has been proven with in vitro studies and in vivo studies in mouse, and now they're proving it in human beings. So perhaps, and I, I don't mean to just jump into the com- massive conclusion, but perhaps until we know more, uh, until they do randomized clinical trials, the hematologists and oncologists at the forefront of this disease, they need to say, get that dairy off the hospital bed. Hey folks, okay, back by very popular demand is our plant-powered plate 
fridge magnet, which you are going to receive for free if you leave us a rating and a review on whatever platform you're listening to this podcast on. So here are the details. Just write your quick review. Does not need to be long. Does not need to be a whole story. Just be honest and speak from the heart. Then take a quick screenshot of the review you wrote and email it to us at podcast at switchforgood.org. That's podcast at switchforgood.org. And include your mailing address so we can send you a power plate. We are doing this because the more reviews we garner, the higher we go in search results, which means more folks will learn about our podcast. So the power is in your hands. Leave us a review and zoom, zoom, your power plate arrives at your doorstep. So thank you so much for tuning in today. If we helped you in any way, then click the subscribe button and let's keep hanging out together. We have so much more to share with you. And if you need more information on actually making the switch for good, please visit us at switchforgood.org for loads of info. And you can subscribe to our mailing list where you will receive all sorts of super cool gifts, discount codes to our very fave dairy-free products, and a lifetime of powerful health tips. So join us on the journey to switch for good. This is the future.